Would you date a, a woman with a penis? I, I think that personally, I have a genital preference, but I would. Suck a dick. Suck a dick. Suck a dick. Would you suck a dick? I literally cannot believe they left that in. Now, despite the leftists in the Jubilee comment section saying that I'm a horrible person, that I'm a turf, that I wasn't there to find a middle ground, that I was only there to debate, I am the middle ground and have been for a very long time in my career. I was in Jubilee's most recent middle ground episode, conservative lesbians versus liberal lesbians, even though it's really leftist lesbians versus moderate lesbians or actual liberal lesbians. They cut a lot of what we said out, but they also left in a lot of what we had to say. So of course we have a lot to say. So let's dive in. The LGBTQIA plus community has moved too far to the left. Oof, girl. How many letters are there? <laughs> How many? A hundred? It's difficult because, you know, I think what was once like a very loving and accepted community has pushed so far to the left that, you know, we're seeing this massive pendulum swing that is coming back the other direction that is going to put our entire community, unfortunately, in danger because- It already has. It, it already has because it has gone so far to the left rather than being a good common sense middle ground. Becky, of course, is 100% correct. The alphabet community has gone tremendously far to the left that it has caused a ton of backlash. Most Republicans that I know do not care if somebody's gay or trans. What they do care about is forced pronouns, kids transitioning, a hundred and plus genders that we have to validate at every five seconds of the day, and males competing in female sports no matter how far along they are progressed into their transition. And one of the points I made a little further into this video is that most of us lesbians that identify as conservative are not the old school definition of it. We are the new school definition of conservatism, which is common sense. Lesbians for common sense, Americans for common sense. This is my new merch, by the way. If you want it, I'll have a link in the description below where you can get it. Help support the channel. Thank you so much. New age conservatives are old school liberals or moderates. And if leftists can change what the word woman means, why can't we change what conservatism means? One thing that was getting quite annoying and that a lot of them on that side kept bringing up was the idea of privilege, race relations, and my friend Sasha f nailed it. She had a lot to say about it. You are able to have privilege because you don't show up like I show up. You're not a woman of color. You're, you're not masculine. So it's easy for you to say, oh yeah, this is okay, but you're not realizing that you're forgetting me and my existence and what I might need. We're under attack. I am an American and I have every right as everybody else does. I have nothing stopping me from getting married, owning my own home, starting my own business, nothing. As okay. I, raising, raising kids, kids. That's privilege. That, how is that privilege? But how she's also a person of color. I'm a person, a of, person color. of color. I know, but you <laughs> so show up differently than I do. How? But, but you but presenting your then has no, no Wait, effect so, on that. So since you- And being black. I, I am also black. The most important thing that I personally mentioned during this privilege debate, which of course was cut out, and I know this because Amber used to be a friend of mine, that my dad was a mailman, and then he died of cancer when I was 23. A lot of people don't know that, which is why I have, you know, actual trauma. Amber's dad was a professional football player that made millions of dollars, but somehow I'm the one that's more privileged. Again, interesting how they cut that part out. Although I will give Amber credit because after I mentioned that to her, she did say, listen, I do understand that I too have privilege. It's important to call all types of privilege out and I said, well, if, if everybody has every type of privilege, no matter where you go, somebody has privilege. Is it even privilege? I would date a trans woman. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. Well, I guess. Hmm. Well, hmm. Nah. 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 Wow. Eh. Yeah, you're surprised, right? Yes. See, yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people don't know. I mean, does she have a vagina? I don't like, I don't like. I, That's a genital preference, not. I, that, I, disgusting to say genital preference. Please don't call it a genital preference. It's a sexual orientation. I know people in the comments of the Jubilee video are saying that I was combative, that I was annoying and very aggressive, but I will f die on this hill. Do not gaslight me and the rest of monosexual people into saying that genital preference is a thing. By saying that having a genital preference, which is really sexual orientation, is not okay. Let's look at the definition of preference, shall we? Just to make sure I know what I'm talking about, which I do. In preference to something, if you choose one thing in preference to another thing, you choose it because you like it or want it more than said other thing. Okay, see, I don't have a preference for vaginas. I don't like dick. I don't like males. People that look like males, look like men. I don't like male genitalia. I've never been attracted to them. And remember people, anybody that tells you that your sexual orientation, something that is innate, that cannot be changed. Example, 
calling it a genital preference is homophobic, like actually homophobic. It doesn't matter whether they've gone through their procedures or not. If we are dating a trans woman, it shouldn't matter whether they have a vagina or a penis or anything. So I should, I should like convince myself that I have to be attracted to somebody's genitals if no, I'm not. Uh, I personally would date a trans woman, but I don't think it's transphobic not to want to. Thank you, Julia, for being like one of the only leftists that made sense, at least somewhat, on this panel, in my opinion. It's probably why we stayed friends over the years. I feel like any like non-man dating a non-man, like we now define as being a lesbian. Would you date a, a woman with a penis? <laughs> I, I think that personally, I have a genital preference, but I would- second would you? Currently, like, I would say that I have a genital preference, but I would never rule anything out. Like, I've mm -hmm. dated non-binary people. Um, I wouldn't rule out dating anyone who's trans. I think I'm also, like, a very progressive and open-minded person. I wouldn't say that if I loved someone that I would rule them out for being trans. I don't like the fact that you used open-minded, but you're allowed to say that, of course. It's your, it's your yeah. prerogative to, to say how you feel. But Thanks. to me, open-minded comes across as me being closed-minded. Oh, and nice. I don't think you can, I'm just saying, just saying, like, I'm not closed-minded because I have a sexual orientation that's monosexual. Absolutely. Thank you, appreciate that. I mean, yes. And remember, monosexual just means attracted to one sex, one type of sex traits. That can include straight people. I wanted to highlight a friend, Gilbert, who was in the Jubilee episode a few weeks ago. While he was watching this video, he sent me this voicemail and I wanted to share it with you guys. So proud of you. Orientation and preference are completely different. And that's 101 on understanding these issues, right? Blondes or brunettes, that is a preference. Male or female, that is orientation. In the name of progress and progression, why are we making statements like trans women are women, which quite literally erases part? That's the whole point of being trans and their experience. I also just think that to assume that a trans woman is whether they have their parts or not, and if they use them in a traditional way, is a little bit gross to just That's not true lead either. with that. Um, no, I, I just, I'm just saying to automatically assume, like, because you went to, are you going to suck a dick? Are you going to suck a dick? Often, <laughs> my trans women <laughs> friends and the ones that I've dated don't want to show up that way Most in a don't. sexual space. Amber is actually correct here. There are a lot of trans people, friends of mine included, that do not use or want to use their genitals because it does cause them a great discomfort to do so. It causes them dysphoria, looking down and saying, I don't want that there. Why is that person touching it? But the point I made after and that they cut out was part of my sexuality, not my sexual orientation, my sexuality, meaning how you want to be with people sexually. A big part of that for me is making my partner feel good by using their genitals. Becky actually said this better than I did. If I'm going to date a trans man, they are a trans man, which means they were born a female, which means they have female body parts, female hormones, female chromosomes. That doesn't make them any less of a person. Mm -hmm. Now, I can be polite if I like someone, if I vibe someone. I have no issue using your preferred pronouns. I have no issue addressing you how you wish to be addressed. But I also don't have to agree that men and women are the same thing. I also don't have to agree that a man who transitions to a woman is suddenly full force woman. No, he will always be what he was. Now, if I want to use she, her, cool. I can be respectful of that, but I'm not going to ignore basic science in order to uh, tiptoe around people's feelings. One thing that they cut out here, I thought personally should have been left in because it was a big like, oh shit moment, was when the non-binary person kept telling Becky how to properly gender somebody, because Becky was saying he, when we were talking about Sam Smith, the non-binary person kept saying them, them. And Becky was saying, no, you will not tell me how to speak. You will not disrupt my freedom of speech. And the non-binary person sat there and like, was in absolute shock. Like it was the first time anybody had put this person in their place. Wish they kept that in the episode, but now you know what happened for real. I also appreciate that Becky said that conservatism isn't just about the social aspects of politics. It's also about where we want our tax money to go to. How about the school libraries? What we want our kids taught in schools? We're not just looking at social issues whenever we're talking about yes. conservatism versus leftism or right versus left. Yeah, social issues are absolutely a part of it. But then we're also looking at, okay, how are we taxed? How is the government spending our money? How much of our tax dollars are going overseas? How are our schools being run? How are our children being taken care of? Do you have a nice library in your town that you can visit? All of that can be traced back to your political leaning. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important to understand my sexuality has nothing to do with the way I think the government should spend our taxes. 
preach. We do live like everybody else. There's no, no, you, I don't. You being able to say that is privilege. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I'm not trying to I don't, for you. It is. People are homophobic to me too, but it doesn't affect my life. I, wasn't I don't that. let that. Yeah, you I did think say just, that. No, no, no. Um, it's a privilege to not understand every but other people's But how do you know I don't experience. understand? Because you're asking me the question. Well, yours is different than hers and hers and hers, exactly right? So, <laughs> so right? how can you I tell me I'm privileged? How can and you feel safe? How can you tell me I'm privileged? I live when in Florida and I feel very safe. Uh, you show up differently than I do. And then, oh, I show up I, I, very I differently than I do. There's, there's more Hispanic people to. in Florida than yeah. there probably are in California, mm -hmm. actually. What does that have to do that with has me? That's what you're talking about. Is that not what you're talking about? You're no, talking about you race can relations. walk down the street in Florida and be cool. I because I'm femme, because I'm not like 100% like wh where, where's the I think dividing that we should take a trip about? to Florida and see what it's really like. Yeah. What you hear and oh, what I you experience in is all the time. But okay, then is anything fine. ever happened in Florida? I live in Florida. I'm here now. I live here in the winter months. I live in South Florida, Miami, where there's probably like eight out of ten people are Hispanic. Cuban, some kind of Hispanic, mainly Cubans. And if you're feeling like there is a lot of homophobia here, that might be a problem with the Hispanic community because Hispanic people are generally pretty religious and conservative. That's your people, Amber, not my people, not white people. I'm just saying. But of course, somehow I'm still the one that has privilege, even though my people are the most accepting of actual LGBT people. Everybody in the LGBT community has known this for years. Who are the LGBT kids or teens that are most likely to be homeless. Black and brown. Why? Black and brown people tend to be more religious and conservative. One last thing I wanted to comment on that I didn't get a chance to say that day was in response to the last prompt of gay men and them being more accepted generally compared to lesbians. Amber had brought up the fact that lesbians, as far as nightlife is concerned, always get the off night. I made the joke, I think I said it during, and I think they left it in about Wednesday nights, because Wednesday nights is always lesbian night, because nobody goes out on Wednesday nights, right? So the, might as well give it to the lesbians. All the clubs are shutting down all over the country that are lesbian specific. I often have to fight battles of them not want, them wanting to give us nights that are like the off nights, that yeah. the popular nights because they think we don't, us as lesbians don't <laughs> yeah, make always. enough money to you know to f for that space for that night, and are often times I'm finding that my bar percentage or whatever has to be much higher in order to have that space. So then, as a person that tries to create space, I'm finding it very difficult for us to have space, um, especially in the community of where it's primarily white, cis, gay, male. Sure. While I agree that that sucks, how is that the fault of gay men? We already know that lesbians tend to be homebodies. I've talked about this on my channel years ago. We know that lesbians tend to not spend as much money when they go out because they tend to be cheap. And are we just expected for these places to continue existing without us financially supporting them? Like, how does that make any sense? Make it make sense. Speaking of financially supporting, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post videos every single Sunday, and of course, sometimes bonus videos like this one when something really crazy happens. If you want to support me, there are many ways you can do that. You can go and follow me on my Locals page, and you can also buy one of these hats or a number of other products that I have in my store. Link to that is in the description below. Other than that, I will see you guys back here on Sunday with a brand new video. Until then, I love you. Keep calling out the bullshit. Bye, bitch.